give me your best shot. Today's been a rough day. Aye, hang in there, lass. Have a bit of this. Why are you serving me this? Lassie, didn't you know? The 18th Amendment just passed. Unless you know the password, you get nothing but disappointment. I'm Asian, I am disappointment. What time period is it anyway? Lassie, it is... Vodka, whiskey, bourbon, and liquor. Drinks you just can't get into. But you, on the other side of that screen, might have the acquired taste for it unlike me. Alcohol has existed for centuries. Its exact and first origin muddied throughout the years. But it's believed that the first beverage might have been made using berries or honey during the Neolithic period. Even way before bread, because those cavemen really liked to party. In Egypt, the great Osiris was believed to be the inventor of their most notable beverages, beer and wine. Besides ritualistic and recreational use, alcohol was also used as a religious offering to the gods, besides people. In China, alcohol also had a spiritual association. When used as an offering, it was considered as a sacred liquid and became so popular that many of China's folklores weave it into its stories. From weddings to funerals, alcohol is used in many occasions. And now for Greece. They love themselves a good mead, which is fermented using honey and water. They place high importance on one's ability to drink. So if you were an alcoholic, perfect. Your kidneys may have been fucked, but you would be a cultured person. In short, alcohol was present in many cultures and used for various purposes ranging from medicinal to just wanting to get shit-faced. Despite alcohol's ancient roots and popularity, there were periods in America in which it was prohibited from being manufactured, sold, and transported. So today, get your time-traveling hats on as this anime girl teaches you about alcohol and the noble movement. As a note, the temperance movement has been around way before prohibition. It stemmed from the 1850s, but its national impact wasn't until 1918, the closing of World War I and the year that Congress passed the 18th Amendment. For those who don't give a shit about us Americans, and I don't blame you. Newborn American babies. Newborn citizens of these United States. Free and with rights guaranteed by the Constitution. These new arrivals in a typical American town have equal legal rights. Amendments are constitutional rights protected by our federal government. For the purpose of this video, we only care about the 18th Amendment. Not 17, 16, and anything else under 18 that you should not be touching. No touchy! During Hoover's presidency, Congress passed the 18th Amendment because of pressure from temperance societies. And if you're wondering what the heck are those, they are groups who believe that society was morally corrupt. And not surprisingly, they were religious groups. So the amendment aimed to improve America's social problems by banning alcohol. This attempted effort was called the Noble Experiment, and it stated that alcohol would be federally prohibited. Naturally, this was unpopular and really hard to enforce. So in 1919, the Volstead Act came to be, and it took effect in 1920 to help implement those rules. In summary, the Volstead Act is what made alcohol harder to make, and sell. The 18th Amendment is just the nation's official stance that they don't like alcohol. So one is kind of all bite, the other one is just bark. Oof, oof. Since alcohol became some big ol' national cocktease, gangs started taking advantage of its high demand. They became business vultures by becoming bootleggers and creating speakeasies, or however you pronounce that, it's very hard. But just to note, people could still purchase from licensed distributors for medicinal or we wages reasons. Whether they followed through with those reasons, it's up to you, but I'm pretty sure you know the answer to that. Definition time! What is a bootlegger? It's a smuggler. They distribute and sell goods illegally. And what is a speakeasy? Mob-controlled saloons and bars. And with all that money, I bet the mobsters are rolling in bitches. One infamous example being Al Capone, aka Scarface, as he made over $60 million during this time period. So what exactly happens in a speakacy besides drinking alcohol? This isn't a very unusual scene. You've probably been to parties like this yourself. Lots of them. A bunch of us kids get together at somebody's house every now and then, and there's music and dancing and just general fun. The only thing different about this particular party was what happened to spoil the good time everyone was having. 
Well, I got a hooker over there if you're up for a good time. Looks Canadian. We also have jazz playing if you want to dance to that. I can only do math, not dance. Lastly, we also serve a good Italian food. Good enough. Now about that alcohol. If it's alcohol you want, then it's alcohol you get. But only after you sign this agreement that I won't be held responsible for possibly killing what you. What the hell is this? An iTunes agreement? Because of its high demand, bootleggers would resort to making their own liquor. This came with its own set of consequences such as... Oh, I don't know, death? Their attempts range from selling industrial alcohol to mixing it with water or more flavorful drinks as a way of reserving their stock or hiding the icky taste. Now, since alcohol became even more popular during this time instead of unpopular, the Anti-Saloon League took to extreme measures to achieve their goal. With government approval, they went as far as to taint the alcohol supply sold to bootleggers. So people unfortunate enough to drink the Poison Hooch which is basically pure methanol, died from this. Unsurprisingly, the government at the time feigned ignorance to this and refused to help those who drink. As you all should or will know now, the prohibition movement failed. The banning of alcohol allowed organized crime to worm its way in, and enforcing the Volstead Act was way too difficult, since many people ignored the law and were easily bribed. There were also loopholes such as purchasing alcohol for medicinal, and religious purposes. Funnily enough, but unsurprisingly, church enrollment soared along with a number of self-professed rabbis during this period. More people were also dying from the poisoned alcohol sold in the black market than before the amendment was even passed. So when Franklin D. Roosevelt became president, the 18th Amendment was repealed by the creation of the 21st one in 1933. Meaning, screw the 18th Amendment and bring alcohol back. And now, we have modern day America. Where a lot of people are fat and they like alcohol. <laughs> but this is still the America you know and possibly love or hate. So, it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed this video of an anime girl teaching you about alcohol and the noble movement. And if you like to drink, Drink safely.